Anna from Bright Lane Gardens, and today we're here to talk about raspberry canes. Specifically, we're going to talk about prima canes versus flora canes, when to prune raspberries, and how to train and trellis raspberries. Raspberries are a staple plant in any garden, and they are an excellent choice for beginners. There are a couple things to note about raspberries. One, they can spread really easily, and they can get out of hand really quickly. That's why knowing how to prune and trellis these raspberries is a really important step in growing them in your own backyard. And two, oftentimes raspberries that are left to grow on their own without any intervention produce significantly less fruit than what they're capable of. So some of the steps that I'm here to show you today are so you can maximize your fruit production and get as many berries as possible during your fall harvest. We're gonna start with some definitions and that's primacane and floricane. Let's head on over to my planting table so we can take a closer look at some of the plants behind me. The first thing that we need to talk about is primacane versus floricane. So all raspberries produce canes from their root mass. These canes are classified in two different ways, prima cane or flora cane. Prima cane simply means first year brand new growth that sprouts up right from the root mass and flora cane is second year growth, which were prima canes last year. These will bud out and produce fruit on all raspberry plants. The big difference is some raspberry varieties will produce fruit on prima canes or first year growth and other raspberry varieties will only produce fruit on flora canes or second year growth. I will say as a plant nursery, we always carry prima cane producing varieties, meaning all of the raspberries that we sell here at Brightling Gardens will produce fruit on those first year canes. It's just not as much fruit as what the flora canes will produce. So essentially with a prima cane fruiting variety, that means that you will get a little bit of fruit, usually towards the tips of the canes, towards the end of the summer there on those prima canes, and then you will receive a lot of fruit on the full flora cane the following season. If you have a flora cane producing variety, that means that it will not produce any fruit on that first year prima cane. It will only produce fruit on the second year flora cane. There are pros and cons to both varieties. I would say I think most sellers at this point are selling the prima cane producing variety because it's awesome to get fruit in your first year and having a little bit of fruit on that prima cane followed by a lot of fruit on that flora cane is just a higher yield overall. To give you a better idea of how these prima canes grow, I have a bare root raspberry in front of me that is starting to sprout a little bit here. So I'm gonna point out just a couple things. This is my second year flora cane right here in the middle. If you buy a bare root plant, which this is considered a bare root plant, you'll notice that it's gonna come with a single stem and that's basically just a second year flora cane that they're using to show you where the soil line should be. It's not an issue that they cut this down at all. The canes grow so quickly. It's all about the health of the root mass. So don't worry about this at all. This is just to show you this is where the stem is. This is kind of the soil line that you're gonna plant at. But down here you can see the root has an offshoot that comes back up and this guy is just starting to sprout and that's going to be a prima cane this year. But you might notice that on the second year flora cane here, I already have some fresh leaves coming out. So this is a living cane and this will continue to produce and it will continue to grow this year and this will likely produce fruit as well. But these guys here are just going to turn into leaves. This one here is going to be a prima cane. And it looks like I've got a couple others. They're really small on here, but you can see a couple other little offshoots. Those are all going to turn into your prima canes this year. Here's another example with just a few more prima canes on it. So you can see this is kind of the upright way that we would plant this. And this turns into an L type shape and it's going to continue to grow in this direction. So my prima canes are going to continue to shoot up all in a nice little line there. So later on when I talk about trellising these raspberries, keep that in mind, this linear direction that this likes to grow. And as this plant continues to mature, it will continue to grow in this line and send up more prima canes as it goes. Now I'm sure you're wondering, okay, prima cane is first year, flora cane is second year. What about the third year? So in the third year, we snip. Third year canes don't produce anything. They typically don't produce any foliage. They definitely won't produce any flowers or any fruit. So as a general rule of thumb, prima canes you love, flora canes you love, third years don't even get a name and you snip those right off at the end of year two. 
So as these canes age and you prune them back, that's what enables the plant to produce more prima canes for the following season. So now that we've talked about prima canes and flora canes and third year old woody growth, let's walk over to one of my plants behind me so we can identify what these different types of canes look like. This plant that I have in front of me is an Anne raspberry plant. It does produce a yellow or a golden raspberry that is very sweet and delicious. This plant here was potted up a couple years ago and has lived in this container ever since. Will continue to live its life out in this container. Now, as you can see, this plant has several different stages of growth on it. So right in the middle here, you see this really old cane. It's very woody, stiff, not pliable at all. And there's no growth coming out of this whatsoever. Right next to it, you can see I have a slightly more flexible, slightly reddish cane popping up. It does have a little bit of fresh green foliage popping out of it. And then out of the far right here, you can see these little itty bitty canes starting to grow out from the soil. These guys are nice, flexible. I can bend them all the way down without them breaking. And they each have nice, fresh green growth coming out of the top of them. So I just showed you three different types of canes. This right here is third year or beyond. This right here is my second year flora cane. And these guys down here will be my first year prima canes this year. So third year or more, second year flora cane, first year prima cane. Now, since this is a prima cane fruiting variety, I can definitely expect to get some fruit on the very tips of my prima canes as they mature this fall. I can definitely expect to get fruit this summer on my flora cane coming right up here in the middle. Here's another flora cane behind it and a third flora cane off to the left. And this woody cane right here and this woody cane right here are both dead and non-producing. So those I'm ready to prune off. Let's step over to another plant for another example of the canes. This is a very large plant. This guy is about four years old. I actually did pot him up in another video about growing raspberries on containers. I'll link it here if you are interested in watching that. As you can see, this is a very large, very robust plant. This is actually a jewel black raspberry plant, so it does produce black raspberries. They're nice and large black raspberries, not like the ones that grow wild in our backyards here. And this plant has not yet started to produce prima canes, but it does have some very well established flora canes and some other older growth that I'm ready to get rid of. So as we zoom in on the plant here, you can kind of see there's a little color difference. So this cane right here is reddish. This cane right here is reddish, but the one behind it is very definitely brown. These canes here are your flora canes or your second year canes. And this cane behind it is third year or greater, which means he's dead and no longer producing. And as we move over here, we can see we have the reddish flora cane, reddish flora cane, and again, another brown older cane that won't produce this year. So we've talked about the different types of canes. We've talked about how to identify those canes. And now we're going to talk about what to prune. It is early spring and it's totally fine to prune these plants in early spring, but I have to say it's a little easier in the fall only because you can see right away which ones are the flora canes because they already have active foliage on them. As you can see this plant behind me, it doesn't have any active foliage growing on those flora canes yet. So it does make it a little trickier to determine which is a flora cane and which is a dead cane, unless you are familiar with looking at the color and the structure and the shape of the cane overall. So for today's sake, we are going to go ahead and prune off all of our third year or beyond canes, AKA all of our woody dead canes. So this cane right alongside me, he is very much dead. I can tell right away because he's brown, but my second test is going to be the snap test. So he is dead and dry, which makes him snap like a dead twig. If you have a cane and you're not too sure if it's a flora cane, a living second year cane, or if it's a third year dead cane, you can try to snap the very tip of it. If it snaps really easily and has a crunch to it, then you know it's a dead cane. If it seems to have some pliability to it and is green on the inside, don't touch that cane anymore. That will likely produce additional foliage, flowers, and fruit this year. So you don't want to cut back any flora canes unless they're damaged. Looking at this plant, I've identified three of the third year dead canes, and I'm gonna go ahead and prune those off about an inch above the soil level. 
be careful as you're pruning because there are a lot of sharp spikes on here. And there's actually a fourth dead cane in here. There is one other type of cane that you want to prune off, even if it's not dead, and that is a damaged cane. So as you can see, this cane right here, he had too much weight at the tip and he did flop over and break. This remaining part of the cane here is not going to grow. So I'm gonna snip it right at the break here. And as you could see, that one was actually a little harder to cut than the dead ones were. Again, that was a living cane. I do wanna cut it back because any sort of break or injury like that can actually introduce disease, bacteria, anything into this plant. We wanna make sure we're keeping it as healthy as possible. So I trimmed it back to a more reasonable layer and I'm really hopeful that this floricane will continue to produce this year. And then moving on to my Ann raspberry over here, I did identify those two primary dead canes that we wanna get out of there. The stem on this one is quite thick and I'm not even sure that my shears can get through it. Oof. That's a big one. So I have to get my more robust shears out for the rest of that, but I'm going to cut it as low down as I can. Okay. So I have those two canes off. There's one other thing that I noticed. The very tip here does look really dry and dead. I've noticed that there is no foliage growing above this point here. So I am actually gonna trip, trim off the very tip of that there, just so I can drive as much of that nutrients back down into this root mass as possible so that this guy can produce healthy prima canes this year. One other thing to note on this plant, you might notice that this floricane is A, pretty small compared to the other floricanes and B it seems really far off from the center of this plant that's totally fine so this floricane here shot up towards the end of the season last season that's why he's so stunted compared to the other ones here it's likely that he sent out a runner and it just traveled underground for quite a while before it made it to the top of the surface, which is why this didn't emerge until, oh, around September or so last year. We usually get our first frost in October, so this guy only had a month to grow above the soil before he was thrust back into dormancy. I'm really confident that this cane here will actually be my highest producer this year because it has the furthest to grow, but it has the best head start compared to the other prima canes that are going to grow this year. So we've talked about the difference between prima canes and flora canes. We've talked about how to identify those canes and which canes to prune. The very last step that we have for a healthy raspberry production is going to be trellising. So a very common question that we get at the plant nursery, do I have to trellis my raspberries? The answer is no, you don't have to trellis your raspberries. But if you don't, the raspberries will spread easier. I know that sounds contradictive, but keeping those raspberries up off the ground will actually help them to grow upright instead of outwards. So I love to trellis my raspberries. It helps keep them contained in the area that I want them, and it definitely helps improve my fruit production. Additionally, raspberries can be really susceptible to mold, mildew, and other diseases, so keeping those canes up off the ground is essential to maintaining their health. Trellising is very easy, and I know a lot of people have it down to a science, but when it comes down to trellising, there's really just one simple concept, and that is keeping your canes upright as close to the root mass as possible and keeping them off the ground. For the sake of today's video, I am going to just use this really simple gothic trellis here. You can pick this up at any of your local hardware stores. There are so many designs that you can use for raspberry trellising and I will make a video on it at a later date. But when it comes down to it, you really just want an upright trellis that can handle the full height of your mature plant. And as you can see behind me, this jewel raspberry plant is massive. If I trellised him all the way up to the top, it would definitely be taller than me. So we're talking about five foot nine or above. This plant behind me has never been trellised, simply out of laziness. So I am going to trellis him today. I do wanna to say that I'm currently trellising floor canes, which are second year canes. 
floor canes are much less flexible and much less pliable than Prima canes are. So this is my PSA to you. If you can trellis your raspberry that first year that you plant it, because then you're trellising Prima canes instead of Flora canes. And it's so much easier to work with Prima canes than it is with Flora canes, especially on a plant that wants to spike you constantly. To get started, I'm going to place this behind the root mass centered in my pot. The second thing I want to do is any of your canes that you have that are unruly, like this one, you're going to want to go ahead and trim them back, oh, a couple feet. Usually I want my longest cane to be about three feet long when I'm trellising. So I'm going to trim this guy back at least a couple feet here. Whenever you're pruning a live cane, make sure you're pruning it on a 45 degree angle. It helps the water to run off the end of the cane and helps to prevent disease. This cane here has a fork in it, and I'm gonna leave that because that means I'm getting two canes for the price of one, which means double the fruit. This guy here, I do wanna trim back. Once you have your canes trimmed to a more manageable length, you want to think about what you're going to use to secure your canes to your trellis. We always use this soft tie material. This is essentially a wire that's wrapped in this nice soft rubber material. It helps protect the branches while also giving a really secure hold on your trellis. We use this on literally all of our plants that we need to trellis or tie up and it does a really good job at keeping that stem nice and safe while still keeping the plant secure. I will link this in the description below because this is a must have for any raspberry gardener. I have my two soft ties here and I'm going to just start to link these through. Now, one thing that you could do, if these were Prima canes, I would be weaving these in and out of my trellis here. I'm gonna try to do as much weaving as I can, but as I mentioned before, the floor canes are a lot more rigid, so they're just not going to bend as much without breaking. But I'm going to try to weave them into the top here just because they seem to grow a lot prettier that way. raspberry completely trellised. I want to show you just a couple techniques that I used here. I'm dealing with a two-dimensional flat trellis right here, so my goal is to get everything back as flat as I can, but I do want it to be able to spread out horizontally as much as possible. This is going to help open up these inner branches so that they can all receive equal amounts of sunlight. If I were to leave them all in one clump in the middle, the center branches would really struggle to get that sunlight and therefore they would produce less fruit. Another technique that I used is I secured these canes at the two thirds mark instead of all the way at the top or all the way at the bottom. I like to use this technique because oftentimes these canes do need support halfway up because they have a lot of growing left to do on top there. So we want to make sure that the base of these canes is supported and will continue to remain upright. Because keep in mind, if the bottom part of your cane is damaged, nothing will grow along the rest of your cane either. If necessary, you can use more than one connection point. Just make sure that they're not on there too snugly or it will prevent water and nutrients from reaching the very tip of your canes. Now that I have this guy trellised, he is ready to grow this year. It is very likely that these canes will continue to grow another couple feet. Oftentimes they end in a nice pretty little arch that I think looks really nice out in the garden. If you want to make your canes go upright the entire way, then you're definitely going to want a taller trellis than this. There are other models of trellising, and like I said, I'll do another video on that, but a really common way to do it is like a grapevine, where you would essentially keep the plant right in the middle and you would build a wire type fence structure that you could then train the canes outward along the wire. Just keep in mind that because the third year and beyond canes will be pruned off, you don't really want to integrate those canes into the wiring too much or you'll be stuck trying to remove a dead branch twisted around an old wire. 
that's all I had for the video today. I hope it was helpful and I hope you guys learned a lot about growing raspberries. Oftentimes the terminology surrounding these plants, such as primocanes and floricanes, can feel really intimidating, especially if you're new to the gardening scene. I'm here to help decipher that because I felt intimidated my first time too, but now that I know a lot more, I know it's super easy information to digest and once you know about it, then you're better prepared to care for your plant. As our spring prep continues, we have so many more videos coming out. So if you enjoy this type of content, please take the time to subscribe to our channel and set up your alerts so you know when a new video is released. We're a small brick and mortar business up here in Northern Michigan, but we love what we do and we love sharing it with all of you. It is seriously so helpful to our business when you tune in on our channel. So thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. We really appreciate you watching this video and I sure hope to catch you next time. Bye-bye.